Hey everybody, I'm Dawn. I am Painted Willow Art and I have another watercolor paint along for you today. We're going to do something a little bit different today though. I think the last, I don't know, maybe three or four paint alongs have been whimsical animals. We're going to do some flowers today. Um, as of today, Mother's Day 2021 is just a couple of weeks away, so um, we're going to do some fun flowers. Might be something fun for you to paint for your mom or to do on a card, something like that. So I've um, got my paint shirt on, ready to go. I'm going to flip the camera around and we'll get started. Alrighty, so here is a sample of what we're going to paint today. Um, like I said, we're going to mix it up from flower or from animals and do some flowers. We'll do something a little bit different. And I thought with Mother's Day coming, this might be kind of fun. And it's really a quick, easy one to do. And you can do it with any kind of flowers. They don't even have to look real. These aren't really realistic looking, but um, this was the one I was playing around with while I was kind of working up the idea. And I really like the way it turned out. So this is what we're going to do today. So supplies for this are pretty much um, what we've used in the past. We're going to use watercolor paper or acrylic paper. Um, in most of my videos, you'll notice that I, I use an acrylic paper because it's a little bit heavier, but I do have watercolor paper today that I'm going to use. Mine is just shy of 9 by 12. I had cut a strip off of it to test some paints, so this is what's left. So it's not quite 12 inches tall, but it's about 9 inches wide. I am going to tape it down because we're going to do a good bit of water for the background. And I'm going to tape this one down a little bit differently than some of the ones we've done in the past. I'm I'm running this tape about halfway. So the edge of the paper is about halfway into the tape just to hold it to the board. But then I'm going to come back and add a little more tape a little further in because I want to have a bigger white border on this one because we're going to do some fun things with the border. So I've got it taped down with just a little bit around the edges and now I'm going to come back with another strip of tape. Whether you're using clear tape like this or a masking tape or a washi tape really doesn't make any difference. And I think what I'm going to do is take the edge of my tape and start that right at the edge of my paper. So where this tape is about an inch wide, I'm going to end up with about an inch border all the way around. And that is ideally what I would like to have. And I think on the last video, I mentioned that this tape that I'm using here is um, Scotch wall safe tape. And I used it in one other video and it, it was okay. It wasn't terrible. So I'm using it again in this one just to give it kind of another go and, and see what I think of it. So I'm doing the same thing all the way around. I'm starting the edge of my tape right at the edge of my paper so that the inside edge of the tape is actually coming further into the paper. And make sure you get your edges pushed down really good. So hopefully we don't get any paint bleeding through. If we do, it's not gonna be the end of the world because we're gonna do kind of a fun little border on this anyway. So with that, Everything is taped down and ready to go. I'm hoping you can't hear the motorcycle in the background. My husband is fixing his dirt bike. <laughs> so he's out test riding it. Oh, you can probably hear it now. Yeah. <laughs> my, my paint studio is in the garage. He has a little shop out back, so he's working on the shop, but you have to drive by the garage to get out. So he's driving back and forth testing his motorcycle. So bear with me on that one today so watercolor paper tape down remember if you are using something more like painters tape or masking tape it might be a little too sticky which means it might rip your paper when you take it off so the easiest way to fix that is to tear off you know whatever size strip of tape you're going to need stick it on like the arm of your shirt or the leg of your pants a couple of times so that you get some fuzz on the back of it and it takes some of that sticky off. That way, when you put it down, it'll still stick enough to hold your paper down, but when you peel it off, hopefully it won't rip your paper too badly. That's the reason I'm trying this wall safe tape. Um, it does not stick quite as hard and I have noticed that it does not rip the paper quite as badly and I don't have to do any special things to it. So that's why I'm trying that again today, just to kind of give it a little bit more of a go. 
The other supplies that we're going to use today are watercolor of your choice. Now for this one, I'm only going to use two colors. On this one, I used yellow and pink. And where the two blended together, I get an orange. So you kind of get a, a third or fourth color, depending on how many shades of orange you get in there. But I'm only going to use two colors. You can use as many as you choose. Um, if you're going to use only two colors, make them two colors that you know are going to blend together. So I know that the pink and the yellow I have are going to blend to make an orange. If you need to test your colors on a piece of paper before you paint with them, absolutely do that so that you can see how they're going to blend together. And to do that, oops, pardon my arm. I always put this little scrap of paper over here in front of me where I can't reach it. If you're going to test your colors, just take a little bit of, of one color and grab a little bit of the other color and kind of blend them together and see what they do. Um, it's not really a good test while they're wet, dry it with a blow dryer or set them aside and let them dry and see what they do when they're dry. That's gonna be the ultimate test. Now what I'm noticing with this one, I used my red, which is actually a, I think it's called quinacridone red, and I used my yellow. Red and yellow should combine to make orange. But what I'm noticing with these two particular shades, that orange in the middle has a little bit of a brown tinge to it. And I don't know if it shows up on camera the same as it looks here in real life. Um, looking at it on camera, it almost looks more orange. But when I'm looking at it in person, it's got a little bit of a brownie tinge to it, um, which I don't want, which is part of the reason I used pink. And my pink goes on really light unless you use a lot of it. The paints I'm using are Daniel Smith paints today but use any paints that you have. And when these two mix together, this gives me more of a peachy orange. And I think in the overall sense of this painting, that peachy orange is more what I'm going for. So that's why I use the pink instead of the red with my yellow. So if, if you need to try out your colors, the two colors that you intend to use, do this kind of test first so that you know they're gonna blend the way you think you want them to blend, okay? The other things we're gonna use are my beloved Sharpie. I've got a white paint pen. I don't know if I'm going to use it yet. We'll have to see how this turns out when I'm done, but just in case I want some hi white highlights, I've got a white Posca paint pen. You can use any white pen that you have. You could use a white colored pencil, a white crayon, anything like that will work. And the white's typically going to show up better on darker paint. I did not use any white on this one simply because they're so light it's not going to show up very well. But if you're using something like blues or purples and they're a little bit darker, you might want some white highlights. So it's always good to have a white pen handy. And I'm going to use a watercolor pencil today. Now don't panic if you don't have a watercolor pencil. I'm simply showing you this as an option. In all of the other videos, we've drawn our designs on with pencil. And I've talked about how you have to go back and erase that so that your lines are really light before you start painting so that if you end up with some of them showing through, they're not going to be really invasive on your painting because you won't be able to erase them once you paint over them. A solution to that is using a watercolor pencil. The idea with a watercolor pencil is that you draw with it like a regular colored pencil, but when you put water on it, it turns into paint and those lines kind of disappear. So you can see what were pencil lines are now just a paint splotch. This is a really neat trick so that you don't have to go back and erase these lines. Now, I'm gonna do this with a yellow watercolor pencil because the bulk of my background is gonna be yellow. And even if I do get some of the pink up against it, I know that it's gonna blend into an orange. So this will work with all of the colors that I'm using in my painting. If you're gonna use blues and purples, maybe you wanna use a light blue watercolor pencil if you happen to have one. Um, like I said, don't feel like you have to go out and buy this to do this painting. You certainly don't. You could draw your design on with regular pencil, go back and erase it so that you can just really lightly see the lines, just like we've done on all the other videos. I just wanna show you um, a couple different things in this video, things that we maybe haven't looked at or haven't done before. So watercolor pencils, if you happen to have them, are a nice way to be able to draw your design on in a color that's gonna match the paint that you're using and not have to go back and erase those lines, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm, I'm gonna do this slightly different than my sample because I wanna have more than two flowers on here. Um, 
typically in something like a painting or a drawing, odd numbers are a little more visually appealing. You'll also see that in like flower arranging, things like that. I just did two because I was messing around with the general idea, but for what we're going to do today, I want to have more than two flowers. So I'm going to start kind of right here in the middle. And the flowers that I'm going to draw aren't necessarily going to look realistic. So I'm going to start kind of right here in the middle and just do a little oval. And I realize that with the watercolor pencil, you guys aren't going to be able to see this as well as with regular pencil. But I'm still going to do it because I want you to see what happens when we paint it. So this is going to be the middle of my first flower. And from here, I'm just going to kind of draw out random petal shapes. They don't even have to be really perfect. Whatever petal shapes kind of grab you. You can make them a little wiggly if you want to. Give them a little bit of character all the way around my flower. Okay. I'm going to do another small one kind of down here and they're going to kind of overlap a little bit. So let me zoom you back out a little bit and move. So I'm going to do another one down here and I'm going to do just a circle for my middle again. Only this time I'm going to use kind of rounded petals. Okay, and I'm going to do another one over here that's going to be completely odd looking. So I'm going to start with an oval, and then I'm going to stack another oval on top of it that's a little bit smaller, and another on top of it that's a little bit smaller yet. And that's all I'm going to draw. I'm not going to put in stems. I'm not going to put in anything else at this point in the game. Okay. Um, yeah. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Sorry, I had a little brain lapse there for a minute. So with just that, I'm going to start painting. We're going to add all the rest of the details after. And the way we're going to paint this one is really light. Um, part of the magic of watercolors is that they are transparent or semi-transparent. So when you look at something like this one, it almost looks like there's light coming from, in, from the inside. And I really quite like that look of light coming from the inside. That's part of the beauty of watercolors. Now, often when I paint, I will use a little heavier pigment, a little more paint, and it, it, it doesn't get quite this luminosity, but we're gonna go for this luminosity today. So we're gonna do this a little bit differently than a lot of the other paintings we've done in that we're really gonna water down the paint. This is gonna be a really thin coat of paint on the background. These are a little bit thicker in the centers of the flowers, but it's that thin coat of paint that's going to give us kind of that luminous look, okay? Now, the way I'm going to do that is that I am just going to go straight from my pan like I usually do. That is probably a really bad habit, but it's my bad habit. You're welcome to do that if you want to. We are going to wet this before we paint, so we're going to be able to blend it out if you do go straight from your palette. If you would rather water your paint down first, an easy way to do it is everybody's got probably these little plastic tubs from something. You can either use the lid or you can use the tub itself as a place to water down your paint ahead of time. And it might be a good idea if you're using something like a pretty vibrant red or blue or purple. Sometimes those colors can be staining. And if you go straight from the the palette to the paper, you might end up with a little dark spot where you wipe the brush the first time, even though you've washed it out and watered it out. So something like that is a good idea to test on a scrap piece of paper first as well and make sure that your paint isn't staining um, before you start working directly from your palette. If it is, or if you would feel better just watering down your paint first, I really love these little pipettes. You can get them online. You can get them just about anywhere. I will take it and just put a few drops of water on whatever I'm gonna mix. And I will also use it to put a few drops of water in the paint that I'm gonna use so that I get my paint started re-wetting. And then you can take your brush and just swirl it around in your paint and then come over here to this water. And you can continue doing that until you have the consistency of paint you want. Now that might still be a little bright for what we're doing. 
So I would just take that little pipette and add some more water to it. If you don't have a pipette, you can do it with your brush. Just dip your brush in the water and bring it straight over here without wiping it on the side of the water container first. Or you could use a spoon or something like that. So you would just keep watering that down until it's the consistency you want. And how do you know that it's the consistency? Well, grab your little test piece of paper and put some paint on there and see how dark it is or isn't. If it's too light for what you want, then go back to your palette, grab a little more paint on your brush and come back and mix it around and just keep doing those little test swatches until you get the vibrancy of the paint that you want. Okay. On all of these, this paint is still pretty vibrant, but it's thin enough that I can see the white paper through it. So you would just keep doing that mixing until you get that, the consistency that you want. Make sure that you mix up plenty of it. You don't have to do a whole ton, but make sure you get a good amount because you're going to need to cover the whole background with it. Okay. I just stuck my thumb in that. So now I have paint all over my thumb. Okie dokie. So what we're going to do to start with is wet the paper first. And I'm going to start over here on mine where I have just a little tiny space between the flower and the border. Um, because this may dry out a little bit by the time I get back around to it. And if it's just a little tiny space, it's going to be easier to blend back in than if I start over here where I have a big space. I'm not going to wet the entire paper at the same time because it is a fairly big piece of paper and it's all going to dry out before I get to it. So I'm just going to do like maybe a quarter of the paper first. And all I'm doing is just painting plain water on here and spreading that water around. I'm going right up to the edges of my flowers. If you get into the pencil a little bit, if you used a watercolor pencil and it starts to, you know, to kind of liquefy and that color starts to bleed out, that's perfectly okay because in this case, I used yellow. It's the same color as my background, so it's going to blend right in as I'm painting anyway. So I'm wetting about a quarter of this paper. It's not sopping wet. You've seen this in other videos. There's just kind of a shiny sheen to the paper, but there's not really any um, drips anywhere, except right there, <laughs> I noticed in the camera. So if you do happen to have a lot of water and there are drips, just drag it over to a dry spot of the paper. So we're just going for that nice, even shiny sheen, okay? Now with that, I'm then gonna go grab some of my paint, whether you use the watered down paint that you made or you go straight from your pan. Either way is fine. I'm going to use a little bit of that watered down paint that I made just so it doesn't go to waste. And I'm just painting it all over my paper. Whoops. And I'm, I'm kind of letting it puddle here and there to make some darker spots, make some lighter spots. I'm not really being terribly careful with it. Now I am going to grab a little paint from my palette because I want you to see the difference in this. Um, that watered down paint I used is fairly light. When I grab paint from my palette, it's gonna be pretty dark right off the get-go. So I wanna make sure that if I need to, I rinse my brush back off if I, if I got a bunch of it. But I wanna start making sure that I am dragging that paint around. If you need to get your brush wet again to keep this kind of a liquidy consistency while you're dragging it around, get your brush wet as often as you feel like you need to. There's really no you know, right or wrong way to do that. It's going to depend on how quickly your paper is drying. And just kind of drag it around and, and blend it out. Now I'm going to go grab a little bit of my pink. I'm going to put a little bit of pink up here. And again, I'm coming straight from my palette, so it's a little bit bright. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to use my brush. This is all still wet. If I need to get my brush wet again, and just kind of drag it out and drag it around. I'm not being terribly careful about where I'm dragging it. I'm just kind of trying to let the colors all blend together. And I might grab a little more pink and come down here in the corner and do the same thing. So we're going to do that periodically as we go. We're going to add some pink into the yellow here and there. So I've covered everything that I already had wet. So I'm going to come with just plain water again and paint just plain water on the next section of my paper so that I've got a wet paper to start with. That allows my colors to bleed out a little bit easier. And 
And how much of the paper you wet at one time completely depends on, on the kind of paper that you're using. Even if you're using 140 pound watercolor paper like I am, different brands handle water differently. So you just kind of have to keep an eye on it. And if it looks like it's starting to dry before you get to it, then don't wet quite as much next time. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some more of my yellow and paint it around. Grab a little more pink. Do remember to rinse your brush in between grabbing your pink and yellow, otherwise you're gonna contaminate your paints and you don't wanna do that. You get paints contaminated with one color and another color, you can end up getting muddy looking colors and not very vibrant colors. So here, I'm gonna take this and turn it so that it's at a little easier angle for me to work with. You're gonna see my light shining off over here because it's still wet. I want it to stay wet for a little while till I'm done blending all my colors in. And I'm just gonna continue around doing the exact same thing. I'm getting a little bit of it wet first. It's starting to dry right here, so I'm gonna put a little more water on it right here. And I'm gonna come back with my yellow, straight from my palette, pretty vibrant. Whee! But because this is all wet, I'm just gonna use my brush to kind of scrub it around, move it around. If I need to get more water on my brush to get that paint moving, get more water on your brush, drag it around. It doesn't hurt to leave some darker spots here and there. That's gonna give your background a little bit of interest. So over here where it was really dark, I'm just kind of scrubbing my brush in it and then coming over here where I didn't have any and rubbing it around. For some reason, I have little fuzzies getting in my paint today. <laughs> and I'm gonna get a little more pink, put some pink in here again. And I'm just scrubbing that pink around. I don't know if it translates well on camera, but it's not really staying pink. It's kind of turning a peachy orange which is fine, that's what I wanted. Again, I'm gonna turn me around and I'm just gonna continue this all the way around. Painting plain water on. And I do have two different cups of water going. I have one that I'm rinsing my brush in and one that's just plain water. So that when I need the plain water, I can dip my brush in the clean one and paint on just plain water. And I've got my other one to rinse my brush in. And hopefully you can see on camera that as I'm painting around this, the, the yellow outline's just kind of disappearing because that watercolor pencil was the same color or close enough to the same color as what I'm painting that it's just kind of disappearing. And because this paper is wet, all of my colors are just kind of merging together really nicely and when they dry, I'm gonna have a nice soft background. And I'm just gonna continue all the way around. I am moving fairly quickly with these because I don't want it to completely dry out until I'm done with the background. I wanna be able to continue to move these paints around, let them merge together until I've got the whole background painted. Now, my paper is starting to warp pretty badly. I don't know if you can tell on camera, you can kind of see this wiggly going on over here. Um, because we're using a lot of water on the background, that's what it does. And that's perfectly okay. That is also the reason I typically prefer to paint on the acrylic paper. It's a little bit thicker, so it doesn't do that quite as badly, but that's just the nature of watercolor. And for something like this, where we're not, we're not going for something really um, stiff and exact, it really makes some interesting spots in the background as it dries because paint is gonna pool in the low spots and it'll be a little bit darker there maybe than it is in other spots. So you do get some interesting color blooms and things like that from the paper warping and buckling a little bit. So. In the case of what we're doing here, it is just perfectly okay. Don't panic if your paper's starting to really kind of, woo. Okay, so there's my background. I think I'm gonna call it done at that.
you will continue to do yours until you feel like you've got the colors how you want them to look. It's all still wet, so if you wanted to go grab a little more color and put a little more color in some spots, I just grabbed that little yellow off my palette and got my brush wet, kind of rinsed it off a little bit, and I'm just dragging it around, so I'm going to have a little bit of a darker yellow spot there. If you want to put some more pink or whatever colors that you are using, you know, certainly do that. You'll just continue until you think you've got that background the way you want it. Now, keep in mind that these colors are going to dry lighter than they are when they're wet. So even though they're fairly light now, they're going to dry lighter still. So we're going to have a really nice kind of pastel-y looking background. So at this point, we need to dry it. If you have a blow dryer, this is a good place to, to pause the video. Go hit this with your blow dryer, get it all good and dry. If you don't have a blow dryer, um, just set it aside for 15, 20 minutes and then come back to it, okay? So I'm gonna pause you while I go blow dry mine. Okay, I'm back with mine dry. We need to do the center of the flowers now, but before we do that, I, I wanna make sure you notice something on this. As warped as your paper may have gotten with all of this water that we used in the background, Notice that when you dry it, it sits right back down, flattens out quite nicely. You might still have a few ridges here and there, and that's completely fine. I'm gonna show you how to flatten this completely when we're done, because we haven't done anything, I don't think, don't think that I remember that's had quite this much water on it. So if you've still got a few little ridges here and there, and I, I do on this one, there's a little bump right there and a little bump right there. That's fine. I'm going to show you how to fix that. But for right now, at least the rest of it mostly flattened out. So as it dries, it's going to do that. Now I'm going to turn this just so my centers are a little bit easier for me to get to. And you'll notice that our background now is just kind of this nice pastel -y, yellow and pink or whatever colors you chose to use so we're going to get a good bit of light coming through it's going to look um, almost luminous as we get finished with this so for my centers i'm going to use the same two colors i'm going to grab them straight from my pan and i'm going to do my yellow first i'm doing the lighter color first because i'm going to add the pink to it as a highlight or a shadow, I guess, actually, since it's darker. And it doesn't work as well the other way around. You can do it the other way around. You could do pink first and add yellow to it, but you're gonna get a whole different look. I wanna do this with my lighter color first. So I'm painting both of those in with the yellow. Now, while they're still wet, I'm gonna go grab some of my pink paint, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use just the very tip of that brush right around the edge I'm just gonna drop some of that pink paint in here and there because this is wet those colors are gonna combine if it has started to dry out a little bit and they're not combining the way you want them to zoom this in a little bit if that looks a little too jaggedy for you, not the way you want it, clean your brush and then come back with just a, a clean, wet brush and just brush it around a little bit. Because your brush is wet, you're adding some more water to the equation, so it's going to smooth that out. Okay? As it dries, it's also going to smooth out a little bit because those colors are going to continue to kind of merge together while they dry. I am going to do the same thing over here with my little guy that's around. And I'm just taking just the very tip of that brush and just kind of dotting here and there that pink color. And you can do the same thing if that has started to dry. Oops. If that has started to dry and looks a little too jagged, clean your brush off. If the space is smaller like this, you might want to dry it just a tad, but still leave it a little bit damp. And just kind of drag the colors around a little bit so that they blend themselves together. So we end up with those centers being a whole lot more vibrant than the background, but they're still the same colors. So there's, there's a, um, I can't think of the word I want. The colors are, are going together. There's a, 
yeah, see, just brain dead. I can't even think of the word I want. <laughs> you get my meaning. The colors go together. There's no clashing of colors going on. So at this point, we're going to go dry the centers, and then we're essentially done with the paint. The rest of this we're going to do with Sharpie and white paint pen, um, depending on the colors that you've used. So go hit this with the blow dryer again, or set it aside for another 15-20 minutes, and we'll come back and finish this. I'm going to go dry mine real quick. Okay, so from here on out, we're going to use the marker to add some embellishments to this. And as with most everything I do, this is not going to be realistic looking. So the first thing I'm going to do is add my stems in for each of these. And I'm just going to kind of make a wiggly line for each of them as my stem. Make it as wiggly as you want to. The next thing I'm going to do is outline each of these, but I'm not going to do it really strictly, really perfectly. Um, I'm going to maybe start with this guy down here. And I'm just going to kind of go around the center a little wiggly. And same thing around each of the, the petals. I am making sure as I do this that I'm covering up any pencil lines or funky paint lines that I don't want. All the way around like that. And hopefully you can see on that little guy. It's kind of wiggly, not perfect, but I think it's cute. That's what gives it a little bit of character to me. And I'm going to do the same thing on the rest of these. And I think on this one, as I go around, when I get to here, I'm going to do some little zigzaggy things, top and bottom, like that. And I'm going to do that same thing on each layer of that one. So we have something like that. On this one, I'm going to do kind of a combination of the two. Um, on my center, I think I'm just going to do like three really loose circles around my center. And then I'm going to do kind of wiggly and some zigzaggies. Wiggly, zigzaggies as I outline the rest of my petals, okay? How much wiggly and zigzaggy you do is completely up to you. You might not wanna do the zigzaggies, you might just like the wigglies, that's perfectly fine. You're just gonna continue all the way around. Putting any zigzags, wiggles, you could do some loop-de-loops if you wanted. I'll show you that when we do the border because I'm actually going to do those on my border. So there we go. Basic outline is done. Now the rest of these are going to be kind of funky. They're not, we're not going for realistic flowers. So for my leaves on my stems, on this big one, I'm just going to do some hash marks. Those are my, my leaves. Yeah, and maybe on this one, I'm going to do a couple squiggles off one side and maybe a hash mark right in the middle. And on this guy, I don't know if you guys can see through my hand, <laughs> on this guy, I'm going to start just a little bit down and I'm just going to do some big swirlies all the way down the stem like that. So they give us the idea of leaves on the stems, but they're not really leaves, and that's completely okay. Um, let's turn this and zoom in so you can see some details better. So for this little guy, I want to give it some interesting little things off the top. So I'm going to do three dots. A little bit off the top of it and then I'm going to just do some squiggly lines that are all going to meet at the same spot coming out of the top of that flower and the more I look at that it kind of looks like something out of Horton Hears a Who. 
And then I'm maybe going to go in and put some little squares here and there or square-ish things and maybe a couple lines around each of those squarish things. Okay? You can put whatever you want on your flowers. Doesn't have to make sense. I'm going to go over to this guy over here. And I think for this one, I'm going to put the crease in the middle of the petals. I'm going to put that in each of them. Almost makes gives it a little bit of movement. And then off the top, I'm going to put a couple of dots. Two dots, three dots, however many dots you want. Okay. In the center, I think I'm going to put some more random dots. But only on half of it generally the bottom half because it's going to look like a little bit of a shadow down there and then around the outside i'm going to put some little x's sometimes i'm going to put two sometimes i'm going to put one sometimes i might put three why i have no idea because this is what whimsical is. It doesn't make sense. Doesn't necessarily go together. But by the time you get them done, you get some interesting looking things. Um, I might put some little dots around the outsides of these petals as well. There we go. That one's got dots. If I want to put some more dots, maybe I'll put some around the leaves. And maybe I'll do the same thing over here. Oops, you're off camera, sorry. Maybe I'll do the same thing over here on this one. Yeah? Now for the big one, in the middle, I'm going to start kind of the same way I did for this little guy down here, I'm going to put the center creases in the petals, but I'm going to kind of make them a little wiggly. And they go half the length of the petal, a little bit more. You can make them as long or as short as you want to. And then out from the base, I'm going to add two more little ones. just because. Now what I'm going to do with this one, to give it the illusion of maybe petals folding back on themselves, I'm going to add some additional areas and I'm going to cross hatch inside them. So where I'm going to do that, there really is no rhyme or reason to it. Maybe I'm going to do on this one. So I'm just going to bring a line out kind of like that. And then I'm just going to cross hatch it. My lines really close together. Like that. And it kind of gives the illusion of something folded over on itself. And maybe I'm going to do the same thing for this one right here. So you get to decide how many of these spots you want, if you want them at all. If you don't like that look, don't do them. But if you want some of that, you get to decide where they're going to be. There's really no rhyme or reason to it. I'm going to turn this just a little bit so it's easier for me to get to the side I'm drawing on. Maybe this one I'm going to do right there. There's not really any defined shape to it. There's not any rule about how long it has to be. Uh, maybe we'll do one right there on that one. So you'll just keep doing that until you feel like you've got enough interest in the form of these cross hatches. If you want to put one on each of them, go ahead. I'm going to leave a couple without them just because. 
I think I am going to come in and put some little dots around the side of the middle of that flower. And then on this one, I'm going to do just some cross hatches on the actual petals themselves. So something like that. Completely random. You can do one, you can do two, you can do three. Make them go different directions. Some might slant this way, some might slant that way. You get to decide how many you want and where you want them. As you're doing that, do be sure to put some, if you've got some spaces like this where the two petals run together pretty closely, put some there too because it, it just makes it feel more cohesive that way. And you would just keep going with that until you feel like you've got enough of those on your flower. Everybody has a different, um, a different preference as to busy or not busy. So you get to decide how many you want on there. I kind of like them a little busy, so I tend to put more on than less, but you get to decide what you're going to do with it. Completely your preference. Now, at this point in the game, we're going to take this off the board. Everything's dry, so we don't need it to be taped down anymore because we're going to do a board around it, and I want to show you how to do that. If you're not quite done with your flowers, you can always go back and do some more on those later until you're happy with them. So I'm going to pull my tape off. And I gotta tell you, I am, I am quite happy with this Scotch Wall Safe tape. It does a pretty good job. In the last video, I had a little bit of bleed through, um, but I think I just didn't have the edges pressed down really well. Because on this one, I don't know if you can see on camera, I, you know, I was kind of messy around the edges. I've got paint all the way out to here on the tape. But I did make sure my edges were pressed down really good before I started painting. And I do not have any bleed through on this one, which is kind of nice. If I'd had bleed through, my edges right here would be kind of wiggly and wonky and, you know, there would be little paint marks coming out and there's not. So that Scotch Wall Safe Tape did a really good job, even with the amount of water that we used. I'm pretty happy with that. So we've taken this off the board. The point <laughs> Sorry, walked away to find the trash can. You probably can't hear me. The point in taking it off the board is so that we can just move it around a little bit easier. And because I need to be able to get to this edge where the paint meets the white paper. That's where we're going to put our border and we can't do that with the tape on there. Okay. So to do the border, we're going to do it much like we did outlining the flowers. We're going to follow this general line, but we're not going to keep it really, really straight. We're going to let it wander and move and be wiggly. So I'm gonna start in my corner down here and I'm just gonna kinda of be loose with it. Do some wiggles here and there. Up to my other corner. And then I will turn it and do the same thing again. Be wiggly with it. Do some zigzags. If you don't, if you don't prefer the hard zigzags, do more like some wavy wiggles. You could do a combination of both. Certainly not going to hurt anything to have both on the same painting. And just kind of let it go. And there we go. So there's the beginning of our border. It's always amazing to me how you can start with, you know, where we started with just the background and the centers of the flower done. And with every little bit of pen you add to it, it just takes on more life and more life and more life. I think that will never cease to amaze me. So now I'm going to add some more to this border, kind of like we did to the flowers. Um, on my border, I want to have some curly cues. So let me zoom in here so you can see what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to pick a random spot. It really doesn't matter where. I'm going to start on my line and run on my line just a little bit and then come up and do a curly cue. 
And the only reason I started on my line is just to make that transition nice right there. Maybe I'm going to do another one here. And another one here. So you can see what that's doing. It's starting to add some character to that border. And maybe I'll do a few hash marks here and there, like we did on the flowers. And maybe another curly cue up here. And I'm just going to continue around doing that same thing. Those curly cues, you'll notice I, I let those come out from the same spot. So they look a little bit different than those. Perfectly fine. You get to decide how many of them there's going to be, where they're going to come from, how many hash marks you want to make. If you don't want to make hash marks, you could put squares over the edge. Here, in fact, I will do that on my sample because my sample is just a sample. If you don't like the curly cues, but you like basic shapes, maybe you do something like this over the edge and put a couple of squares there right? Or maybe you're a fan of triangles, so you want to put some triangles. Nothing wrong with that. Or maybe you don't necessarily like the curly cues, but circles are good. So you put some circles. None is better than the other. It's just a different look. You get to decide what you like and what you want to have on it, okay? So I'm going to go back to this one and finish my border here. And you'll just work your way around until you're happy with the amount of stuff around your border. And if you're not happy with that and you want more, continue adding to it. You can always put more things, more shapes, more curly cues, circle squares, whatever. Um, I'm quite a fan of dots I, and I really don't know why. So on mine here and there, I'm going to put a few little dots. Like that. And I'm just going to do it randomly. I am going to try to keep the number of those dots odd numbered. Because like we were talking at the beginning, threes and fives are a little more visually pleasing than twos and fours. Unless you have something like this where you're putting them on either side of another shape. In that case, an even number will often work just fine. You can vary the sizes of your dots if you're going to do dots. So I did all of mine kind of the same size and shape, but if you wanted to, certainly make some of them bigger and then maybe make the middle one middle sized and the end one smaller. It's just another way to give it a little bit of visual interest. So you could have done it like that instead of like that. Either way is fine. In fact, I think I kind of like that better. So I'm going to go back around mine real quick and do that to them. Just vary the sizes of my dots just because I think it gives it a little more interest. There we go. So you can see how that adds to almost a framing effect of that picture. Now, in looking at mine, I'm, I'm feeling off balance. I feel like these two have kind of a focal point and this one does not. So I'm going to come back on this one where I put these squares and I'm going to put a little bit of paint there so that it's not kind of out here by itself 
with nothing. So I'm just going to color in the center's yellow on those squares that I put on there. And then because those are such a small space, I'm going to grab just the tiniest little bit of pink and just kind of drop one little dot of pink somewhere in that yellow so that it'll disperse. But I think that's going to that makes it feel like it's coming together more. And that's one of the things you do as you're painting. You know, you have an idea, you start drawing, you start painting, you get going. You have to give yourself um, the, the grace and the freedom to change it as you go, because you're gonna be looking at this as you're doing it. And what the idea that you had in your mind is gonna change as you get it down on paper. Rarely, never for me. <laughs> Um, but rarely is something going to come out on the paper the way it is in your mind. So you have to give yourself the freedom to be able to change it up a little bit. I've mentioned in other videos, a, a good thing to do is to kind of set this maybe up against a wall a couple feet away from you or take a picture of it with your camera and look at it on camera because it changes the perspective a little bit. And that way you can kind of get a feel for what you think you do or don't want to add to it to continue on. So at this stage of the game, if you're happy with how this looks as it is, you certainly don't have to continue. If you want to keep adding more to it, you know, you can add other little embellishments on the background. And I think on this one, I went a little overboard. I don't think I'm crazy about that background, but this was my sample one that I was just playing with the idea. So I'm not going to do anything with this, so I really don't care. But I figured out that I think that's a little too busy, and as much as I often like the busier, I think I'm kind of happy with that one the way it is without a whole lot here in the background. So I think for mine, I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to call it done. You can continue adding embellishments to yours as you see fit. I did not use my white pen because I don't think the white's going to show up on here very well. I think that would be just a waste of the pen. So I'm not going to do any white embellishments, but if you did yours with some darker colors, you might want to go back and add some white embellishments to it. They're just against a darker color, that white just pops and gives it an extra layer of dimension and personality. So I think for mine, I'm going to call this good. Um, I'm going to put my little initials down here in the corner. Always remember to sign and I like to date my art because as you make more art, as you paint more, you've got the date on here. You can go back and look at your older paintings compared to what you've done more recently and you can see how your skills have grown. The more you practice, the better your skills are going to get. So I think I'm going to call it good with that. Um, keep in mind that any of these videos, I'm giving you a jumping off spot. I'm showing you a basic concept, but you certainly do not have to do it exactly the way I did. Now, if you do it the way I did it, because you're doing it while you're watching the video, and so we're kind of doing the same thing, perfect, that's fine. But I would urge you to maybe come back with another piece of paper and try it a little bit differently. Use different colors, different flowers, and you know, different doodle techniques. Put more doodles on it, put less doodles on it. That will help you learn what you like and what you don't like. That's how you help develop your own individual style. Maybe you don't like this kind of flower. Do it with a different flower. Maybe you like them more rounded. You could have done them all this rounded flower. Just make them different sizes. If you don't like this guy, don't do that one. Do different flowers. Um, you can do it with anything you want really. These are fun to do for people because they make nice gifts. I mentioned at the beginning with Mother's Day coming, um, you know, paint your mom a picture. I know that my mom still loves when I paint her things and I'm in my 50s. <laughs> it's not like I'm a, I'm a kindergartner and she's hanging it on the fridge. She does frame them and hang a lot of them. Um, she still loves it when I paint things for her. So, you know, maybe paint something for your mom or for a friend. This is an easy technique to convert to a greeting card as well. It doesn't have to be done on a big paper like this. I, I do them big for the purpose of the videos so that you guys can see what I'm doing easier. Um, but you can purchase blank watercolor cards so that you can paint your own card. If you don't want to go out and buy the cards, if you've got watercolor paper because you're painting along, Figure out how big you want your card, cut your paper down, fold it in half, paint on the front, you've got a card. Um, I don't know if you guys are like me, I have all these random envelopes running around. Find one of those random envelopes, measure it, and then cut your watercolor paper the same height and twice the width. 
when you fold it, it'll fit right in that envelope. And so there you've got your own card right there. You can use the watercolor paper to make your own cards. So um, all kinds of different things you can do with this. Try this basic idea with different kinds of flowers, with different kinds of things. You could, you know, you could do the same thing um, with the elephant that we painted last week. Paint, paint the elephant on, do your background, do a border around it like that, and you've just changed the whole way that elephant painting looks by doing something different with it. So as you see these videos and these ideas, you know, certainly give it a shot, but also let your creativity run with these. If you have, you know, you're watching what I'm doing and you think that's great, but I have a different idea, do your idea, see how it turns out. Um, ideas don't always turn out and that's perfectly fine. This is not intended to be um, create perfect art. This is intended to get you started it's intended to show you that making art doesn't have to be terribly difficult. And it's intended to get your creativity going. Um, and also to give you a bit of a Zen space. I, I don't know if any of you have noticed this. Um, if, if you've been painting along with me, and I know there's, there's a good handful of you that do each of these videos as they come out, and I love that, and thank you for that. Um, so I don't know if you notice that when you sit to make art, um, you kind of feel like you go into a different space your brain quiets down, your breathing slows and gets deeper, your heart rate calms down. That for me is the ultimate goal. Um, I used to get really hung up on what does it look like? And I realized quite a handful of years ago, that's really irrelevant. For me, making art is all about finding that quiet Zen space while I'm creating and not being so attached to what I'm doing that if it does turn out terrible, I can't throw it away. You know, if, if it turns out and I don't like it, it's a piece of paper and a little bit of paint. There's, there's not even $3 in this. If I don't like it, I am perfectly okay throwing it away. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be beautiful. I feel better for the time I spent doing it. So, um, particularly if you're a beginner, give yourself that grace. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece out the gate. Not everything is. I, I create my share of bad art and it's perfectly fine. If you don't like it, toss it and start over. If you don't like that one, toss it and start over. Keep practicing. Um, I think my, my husband is a good example of that right now. He's decided he wants to learn how to do acrylic paints. And while I have painted with acrylics, they are not my strong suit. So I've shown him a few things and he's watching <clears throat> excuse me, he's watching acrylic painters on YouTube and doing essentially the same thing. He's painting along with them. And out here in my studio, he's got, he's got things stuck to the wall that he's painted so he can look at them. Um, none of them are masterpieces, but he's learning as he goes and he can see in each one of them as his skills develop as he's practicing. So, um, you know, do that same thing for yourself, regardless of what art medium you're using. Give yourself the grace to fail. Give yourself the grace to let it look like garbage um, and celebrate when it doesn't and just know that with with each session you're practicing your skills are getting better and hopefully you're finding that relaxing space while you paint it's it's not intended to be stress inducing to do this okay so I think with that I'm gonna let oh whoa, before we do I have to show you how to flatten this um, I don't know if it picks up on camera you can see my paper still a little bit bent you can kind of see in with the light on it funny there's a, a ridge right here there's a ridge right here there's a little ridge right here and right here um, if you're not really going to do anything with it there's no harm leaving it that way if you want to frame this it's a good idea to flatten it first so that you don't end up with any weird waves inside the frame the easiest way to do that is to put a blank piece of paper on a hard surface hard flat surface ideally a piece of paper that's bigger than your painting. So where this is 9 by 12, I'd probably put an 11 by 14 piece of paper right here. I'm going to take a spray bottle and spray the back of my painting carefully so that I wet the whole back of the painting. Then I'm going to set it down on that piece of clean paper face down. And the reason I'm doing that is because that's going to protect the painted side. I want to get it wet because that's going to allow the paper to be manipulated. So I set it face down on a clean piece of paper. And then I'm going to take a couple of paper towels 
and put them across the back because they're going to absorb the excess water. And then I'm going to find something really heavy to put on top of it. I usually put a bunch of magazines or a bunch of books. And I'm going to put all those heavy things on top of this and I'm going to let it sit for 24 hours. At the end of 24 hours, it should be dry. And when you take those books off, take the paper towels off, turn it over, this thing is going to be almost completely flat. And that makes it nice for framing. Okay? So a nice, quick, easy way to flatten them. does take 24 hours to dry, but once you've got the books on it, you just set it aside. You don't worry about it for 24 hours. Um, and that gets them nice and flat. Okay? So I think that is all I have got for you on this one. Um, hopefully this video didn't turn out to be too terribly long and hopefully you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you being here. I got word this week that I hit a thousand subscribers on my YouTube, which just absolutely blows my mind. And I am so grateful that you're all here. It just, it tickles me to death. I hope you're enjoying painting as always. If you have any questions or, um, something you want to learn, something that didn't make sense in the video, put it in the comments. I do read and answer all of those comments. Um, if you want to follow along with the rest of my art journey outside of these videos, I am at Painted Willow Art on Facebook and Instagram. I haven't been real active on the socials lately because my day job's been kind of taking over my time, but I am generally more active on Instagram than Facebook, but I am there on both places. And also I have a Pinterest, I'm at Painted Willow Art on Pinterest as well, where I post lots of things like this, um, some that I've done, some that other people have done, to help give you additional ideas where to go next, what to try next. Um, so at Painted Willow Art, Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, all of those. And thank you for being here, and I will catch you with another video next time, okay?